Welcome to the introduction to the Avidyne's R9 desktop simulator. In part three, you'll learn about navigation. The primary nav is changed by hitting this line select key next to it here. We can go ahead and change to nav one or nav two, and then back to the course that is put in the FMS. It is important to understand that both nav one and nav two um, will not work in the computer simulator. Only the primary nav under the FMS will work. Nav1 and Nav2 need real VORs which are not simulated. To simulate the VORs, we need to switch to the FMS. In the FMS, we go ahead and insert, and we can put in the Litchfield VOR, LFD, and hit enter. Now we can go ahead and switch back to the PFD, and we have on the map the line from uh, Battle Creek to the Litchfield VOR. We can use the FMS mode to simulate the VORs by turning off the flight plan and turning on the CDI. The um, OBS can be changed. Right now we can see that the course is on 129. Now if we want to change that we can change by ones by changing the uh, inner knob by uh, one click at a time and it changes by ones. Or we can change by tens by using the outer knob to change the OBS. So you can see the OBS changes here and then also here. We can also direct to the course by just pushing the button. For orientation, let's go ahead and glance at the right IFD switch here. And we can see that the course is off to our right or off to our south. Let's go ahead and switch back to the left IFD. And we can see that the CDI needle also shows the same thing, that it's off to our south go ahead and turn the flight plan back on, we can go ahead that line almost lines right up with the CDI. So we can see if we want to intercept our course, we need to fly towards the course or fly towards the CDI. So let's go ahead and make that right turn. So we'll go ahead and change our heading here. Change our heading off to the south here to go ahead and intercept that. And the airplane will start turning towards the south. And we'll go ahead and intercept the course here. Okay, after our turn is done here, we can see we're on the 180 heading, or the south heading, uh, 177. And you can see the course is starting to come in. So if we go ahead and turn the flight plan back, you can see that course is coming back in. Now the airplane under the autopilot would fly this turn right here, unless I disarm intercept. If I disarm intercept, you can see the airplane will fly right through it and fly right through the uh, CDI. So let's go ahead and turn the flight plan back off. You can see the course is coming in there as it comes on in. And if we do not change our heading, we'll go right past it. Okay, you can see here after a few minutes, uh, we continued flying the 180 heading, and the course did the CDI did go on through behind us now. It's off to the north and east. We turn the flight plan back on, we can see that's there. Okay, so now to turn back and intercept the course. Now that it is off to our east, we can see that by the CDI and the uh, route here. So let's go ahead and we'll change the heading off to the east. And let's go ahead and let's go to a 080 heading. 080, and we'll turn to intercept. Okay, after a few minutes here on the 081 heading, see the course is starting to come in. We flip to the map real quick. We can see the course is up ahead of us coming in. Flip back. Let's go ahead and arm the intercept. And you can see as we get closer, it'll start to change the heading to intercept the course. So we'll have to start turning back towards the heading we have set here, 130. CDI came alive, starting to come in. We're getting closer. About one dot out, the airplane is starting to turn. It's starting to make its right turn here to intercept the heading. If it waited until it got on it, it would go past it. So it's starting its turn early. So we're almost on course here, and we're almost on the CDI. The course comes in. You can turn that off. You can see the CDI. Let's go ahead and turn back to our heading book here, and the airplane will turn off the course. As we turn off the course, we'll see the CDI move off to the right, 
and the course move off to the right. It takes a minute to turn, so it won't happen right away. Okay, now that we've turned, you can see the CDI is off there and the course is off behind us. Now if we turn on the map, you can see that the Litchfield VOR is off here. The bearing pointer will always point to what you have selected. So we have Litchfield, Litchfield here. Litchfield is up here, so it is pointing towards that. So as we fly this way, it'll continue to go further away from our heading to point towards Litchfield. See Litchfield up here, a little star right behind the 080. So let's go ahead and turn to 130. And you can probably see on 130 we'll fly this course and it will never intercept this course over here that we want, or the desired course. And the needle will keep falling down this way to point towards the uh, Litchfield VOR. You can see if I change the scale, Litchfield VOR here, it's pointed right on it. So if I want to intercept this, I have to turn again here to the south or so. so let's go ahead and make my turn. So as I go this way, the Litchfield VOR will be falling off my left side, and so will the pointer of the needle be falling off my left side. Go ahead and change the range. Okay, so now Litchfield VR here with the range, you can see it's starting to come in. So if I want the 130 mark here, this needle will need to move down to the 130. It'll be on the 130 when my airplane is on this course. If I turn off the map view, all I have is this, and I need to wait for this to get close. Now if I wait for it to get on it, but like the VOR, I'll go through it, so I'll need to start my turn slightly before it's there. CDI shows up. Which field it shows up. Starting to make my turn. It's just a little ways, about 10 degrees before, because I'm pretty close to the which field wire. It's right there. It's the pointer pointing right towards it. So the bearing pointer is always handy because it points to the fix that you have put in. Excellent way to keep you oriented. So there, we intercepted the course using the bearing pointer. CDI centered. When we get to Litchfield, the bearing pointer will turn behind us as the station passes behind us. So we now have to track from Battle Creek to the Litchfield VOR using the FMS the VOR with the OBS, and the bearing pointer. This desktop simulator can be downloaded from the Avidyne website.